So one of my favorite things is when I get asked for graphic novel recommendations at work. Doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it gives me the chance to talk to people about this graphic novel. <laughs> Hey there creepy peeps, I'm Nightmare Maven. Welcome back to my channel. If you happen to be new here, hello. I talk about spooky things all year round. So if you also like spooky things all year round, you should subscribe. So Des requested that I talk about a queer horror movie book or TV show that I haven't talked about before or have not talked about enough. And I know I've mentioned this graphic novel before, but I've never given it its own video. And honestly, I just think more people need to read this. So I dabble in graphic novels. I wouldn't say I'm a graphic novel expert, but I, I have read enough to give a few recommendations for sure. But by far my favorite graphic novel I've ever read is My Favorite Thing is Monsters by Emil Ferris. So the story follows 10 year old Karen Reyes who has grown up on a healthy diet of like cult horror, pulp, monster novels, you know, <laughs> big B horror movie vibes with Karen. <laughs> and when one of Karen's neighbors in her apartment building, Anka Silverberg, dies, Karen takes it upon herself to solve her mysterious death. So Karen's investigations take her on a journey through Anka's life as a Holocaust survivor living in Nazi Germany. And Karen finds she's able to relate to certain parts of Anka's story and it helps Karen discover things about herself as well through the process. And this is all taking place in Chicago in the late 60s. So a lot of political turmoil going on around Karen as well. So at as you can imagine, there are some pretty hefty political themes going on in this book. And that's part of the reason why I think the story is so incredible. But there's also a lot going on with Karen personally. So throughout the story, we see how Karen sees herself visually. She sees herself as like this little monstrous being with fangs and hair everywhere and claws. Of course, this partially stems from her feeling like an outcast in her own life and as a kid struggling to figure out what the fuck was going on with me and why I didn't like boys the way my friends seemingly did growing up. There was, there was a, a part of my inner child that was healed reading this book because I related so much to Karen. <laughs> And because of the limited representation available to me back when I was growing up, I definitely felt monstrous at times too. So I particularly love the depiction of Karen in the book. As you can imagine, I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say Karen does come to terms with certain parts of herself by the time you get to the end of the story. <laughs> and it's really rewarding and a little bit heartbreaking as well. And I think the storyline just works really well with the fact that it's a graphic novel and not just a, you know, like a written novel because it's meant to be like a diary of sorts, which is why it's like made to kind of be like a notebook, like it's a spiral bound notebook. Um, you may not be able to see it on the camera, but it's like, it's made to look like it's drawn on lined paper because the book is meant to be Karen's diary or journal. So this is her recounting her day, her week, whatever. And in that sense, there's a little bit of like fantastical element going on in the story as well. Because of Karen's, you know, B-horror movie rattled brain, <laughs> she sees the world, I wouldn't say differently, but she probably, she sees the world in the way like any kid surviving on a healthy diet of horror movies would see the world. It's very much a, a 10 year old's imagination that we're seeing visually in diary form, which is really fun. <laughs> and speaking of that, the way this graphic novel came about and the way it was created, I think is just as incredible as the story. So the majority of this book was drawn using a Bic ballpoint pen and it took about six years to complete. It is quite a thick graphic novel. So back in 2002, the author Emil Ferris contracted West Nile virus and she became paralyzed from the waist down and pretty much lost use of her right hand. So she used the creation of this graphic novel as a form of therapy to help her regain some control of her drawing hand. I feel like knowing that and seeing 
the detail <laughs> in this. Um, I don't think my camera is probably going to do it justice, but just seeing how incredible these drawings are in this and how intricate the lines are, which I know my camera is definitely not picking up, um, is honestly just incredible. I'm going to keep using that word because I just, I feel like this graphic novel is incredible. And technically speaking, this is a critically acclaimed graphic novel, <laughs> which I don't mean to sound so begrudging when I, when I say that, but so it's not like this graphic novel hasn't been talked about before and I wouldn't necessarily say it's underrated, but I feel like all of the, the spaces, the horror spaces I'm in online, I never see anybody talking about this graphic novel, which I kind of get also, it's big. It's bulky, it's, you know, it's a lot bigger than your, your average book, it's heavy. Um, and technically we're still waiting on book two. <laughs> Buried an important piece of information towards the end of this video, but. So Ferris's last update on her Instagram was about 12 weeks ago, but the first book also took a while to complete. Like I said, it took six years to finish, so I'm willing to wait for book two, honestly. <laughs> So I'm just taking it upon myself. Like in the meantime, while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna get as many people to read this as I can. <laughs> it's just a really great story about identity and how we view ourselves compared to how the world, society, our family, friends see us and finding out what's really important amidst all of that. And I know I have a, a decent following of creepy peeps here that interact on my videos and I love you guys so much and I know from interacting with you guys that at times or maybe even now you also feel like the other and I, I just feel like this story resonates so well with that feeling like I said it was literally healing to my inner child reading this <laughs> so even though we're still waiting on book two I would highly highly recommend you check out my favorite thing is monsters. Um, it I feel like it still works as its com as its own complete story. There is a bit of a cliffhanger at the end because there is intended to be a book too, but I don't think it's so bad that hopefully you won't be mad at me <laughs> if you finish it and we you know and we're still waiting on book two. It, it just fit Des's prompt so well, and like I said, it's my favorite graphic novel that I've ever read, and I will recommend it to anyone, but especially my queer horror friends. So um, if you've read this already, please let me know in the comments so I can talk about it with you. And if you end up picking it up and reading it because of this video, please, please come back if you can remember <laughs> to and, and let me know and tell me what you thought. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new here, become a creepy peep today, and I will see you very soon with a new video. Until then, stay strange. Bye.